So after men's doubles, we turn our attention to men's singles. And how about that? The former Olympic champion Taufik Hidayat of Indonesia up against the current Olympic champion Lin Dan of China. Well, Taufik Hidayat announced to come forward onto court. A legend in Indonesia, the 2004 Olympic champion, won the title, the gold medal, when he was unseeded, having been the number one seed four years earlier at the Sydney Olympics, but lost in the quarterfinal in Australia. Three-time Olympian, will he make it four? Well, not secure of his Olympic berth and his qualification yet. And here is a opponent, the current Olympic champion, 28-year-old Lindan. Not only Olympic champion, also reigning world champion. Four times he's won the world title. Well, I'm reading in the newspapers, big debates as to who's the greatest of them all. And he's certainly got to be right up there. Well, so too is this man, one of the great characters of our sport. Yet, I can tell you, whilst some people think he's at times been a little fiery on court and perhaps stacked over the mark i can uh, assure you that the counter side of that is he does a huge amount for charity and a huge amount to try and help youngsters back home in indonesia take up the sport So the 30-year-old from Bangdung in West Java in Indonesia, Taufik Hidayat, not seeded this year. World ranking of 12. Second Indonesian in the world rankings at the moment. And of course, he is former world number one. He was number one when he was 20. Isn't that extraordinary? Number one when he was 18, actually. He was number one back in 2000. Hence, he was the number one seed at those Sydney Olympic Games. Win-loss record for the year, six and three. Now, that does include team competition, because in an individual competition, he lost in the quarterfinal of the Malaysian Super Series and the first round of the Korea Super Series. Lost out in Korea to Englishman Rajiv Usif, who, of course, put out in the first round here the number four seed, Peter Gehra. Well, Taufik Hidiat had a tough opening round against the left-hander from Guatemala, Kevin Corden. But let's first look at Lindan, 28-year-old from Fuzhou in Fujian province on the east coast of China. Number two in the world rankings, but he, like his opponents, has been number one. Achieved that in March 2004. His win-loss record for the year translates into two finals. Was winner of the German Grand Prix last week, beat Simon Santoso, another Indonesian play, player in the final, and beaten finalist at the Korea Super Series event where he lost out to the world number one, Lee Chong Wei, in three games. Surprise loss in Malaysia, his other individual tournament so far this year. Lost in the second round to Denmark's Jan Jorgensen in three games. Now, his matches so far in the tournament, Lindan, no problems in the first round against AJ Jayaram of India. And then in the second round, had to play another left-hander, the qualifier from Malaysia, Chong Wei Feng. Uh, once again, two straight games. So this, the 
13th meeting between these two players in ranking tournaments and I stress that because they've played each other previously in events such as the Asian Games final in Doha in 2006 but that doesn't count towards a world ranking and therefore it doesn't show on those statistics time please gentlemen what a prospect former olympic champion against the reigning Olympic champion, two of the sport's all-time greats. Taufik Hidiat, twice a finalist here, reached the final when he was 17, 13 years ago. Lost out to a certain Peter Gader in that final. A year later, in 2000, reached the final again as an 18-year-old. Lost out to Shah Dranzer. And Shah Shranza, of course, is sitting on this man's coaching bench because Shah Shranza is now men's singles coach. There he is in the orange top. Left-handed Lindan, 28 years of age. On my left, Tafik Hidiat, Indonesia. Lin Dan to serve, love all, play. So Lin Dan, my former world number one, currently at number two behind Malaysia's Lin Chong Wei. Former All England champion, of course, four wow. times he's won this title, having been in seven finals. In fact, reached six consecutive finals, which in itself is quite remarkable, between 2004 and 2009. Both players making their tenth appearance, and both former world champions, both former Olympic champions, both roughly the same age at the twilight of the years, but still both very much at the top of world badminton. Definitely the case, Jill. Two of the greats that have ever played the game. Tafik Hidiat plays a very, very different style to most. He likes to play almost like a doubles game, very flat, taking people on in the midcourt. And a uh, very interesting prospect, this one. Yes, but what's a little bit ominous, I think, for Indonesian fans is the fact that Lindan has won their last eight encounters. And of course, in ranking tournaments, you have to go back the last time that Tafik Hidiat actually beat Lindan was in the final of the World Championships in Anaheim in 2005. Now, when you've got a record like that, do you have the inner belief? That is the challenge, isn't it? You've got to the stage where you've lost so many matches on the trot that your opponent feels like he's walking on water when he's playing against you. So you've just got to play free, believe that you can beat somebody and just have a good go. Well, I have to say, watching Taufik Hidayat uh, late yesterday evening playing against the number five so, seed Chen so, Jin, who, of course, was winner one, of the All England two. title back in 2008 and the number five seed this year. Well, this man played with an intensity that I haven't seen in a long, long while. 21-19, 21-19, an hour and two minutes just for those two games. It really was superb. It was almost as if we had rolled back the years and we saw the desire and the hunger from this Indonesian that has at times been lacking in some tournaments. He's been criticised for it. I still love watching him play. He's a brilliant player to watch. He possesses so many skills, like I said before. He plays in such a different style to many, many players. But he's also been there and done it many occasions before, Olympic champion. I think he's had a bit of a long patch where he felt like he didn't perhaps want to commit to the training as much. He's always going to have the natural skills. Potentially, he's got the best backhand I've ever seen in the game of Hamilton. And uh, when he's on his best, he can beat anybody. Yeah. He does have a remarkable Three, backhand. Two. And he's not afraid to use it. Yes, good 
Back smash from Mindan. So it's over three all. Here's the wonderful defence from Hiriat, but not good enough. Of course, Taufik Hiriat does compete independently of the National Federation of Indonesia, PBSI. Been an independent player now for a number of years. You talk about his training. I think part of his philosophy was that, you know, he would rather do uh, four hours of quality work than six hours of uh, brutal work. You can see that both of his knees are, are strapped. He's been struggling with knee problems for quite a number of years. And he, as a, as a real uh, incentive to keep his career going a little bit longer, actually so, deliberately over. started to train yes but less but it, in better quality that's a great tactic for an older player this is something that my former coach Andy Wood tried to install into us that it is about quality and not quantity of course when you're as talented as someone like Tafik Hidia you can play the game without being perhaps as physically able as some of the uh, Chinese and Korean players and uh, clever play from him to be honest you know if his body can't cope with the extremes of six hours a day then you know take it upon yourself so it's, it's about five, you at the end four. of the day and uh, he's the one that's got to produce the goods yes and he certainly has because you look back over the years and he's won at least one major title every year for 14 consecutive years since his very first title the brunei grand prix when he was 16 years 11 months old beat dong jong who'd just been in the final of the olympics in that final i don't think there's many players who will ever have a record like that that's just incredible so, isn't so, uh, it just shows the final. talent that he he has i first saw taufik here at a junior tournament age 14 and he was, even then you knew he was going to be a special talent he uh, was very very skinny I mean he's not the biggest of guys now but he was very very thin lad very very skinny legs and uh, the power that he possessed for a child which is what he was was impressive you know you always knew he was going to be a great of the game service over six five definitely wanting to get involved in these flat fast exchanges as you suggested Seven, he would five. but you know you talk about the yes. greats of the game I've I've always been a, a great believer in Taufik Hidiat's ability to raise his game somewhat for the big events you know you look at his career 12 medals at major games or championships we're talking olympics world championships asian games southeast asian games and the asian championships as well 12 medals that's pretty impressive only 25 titles in all so he's not one that goes out month after month week after week at the Super Series events. In fact, Eight, the surprising five. statistic, he's only ever won one Super Series title. It does surprise me that he's only won the one. He is an incredible player. He's been around for so many years, and you almost can't believe that that's the statistics. But I actually think that's quite similar about both of the players on court. Lin Dan isn't particularly somebody who will win week in, week out. That's more Chong Wei that picks up most of the Super Series wins throughout the season. But when it comes to the big ones, these two, over the last couple of decades, have been the, the players that really seem to be able to go that little bit further when it really, really so matters. Yeah, Six, respond eight. to the big occasion, thrive on the pressure, thrive on the opportunity. Oh, goodness me, that control so, so net over. from Lindan. The amount of spin that comes off the shuttle off, off his racket there. 
Okay, you could say tougher here. That could have knocked that one off at the net, but it was so tight, and the amount of revolutions the shuttle was doing made it so difficult to even attempt it. Interesting battle developing on the control of the net. Eight, nine. Both players obviously realise how important that is. I think a lot of the top world-class men's singles players are so good at the net. They can play such tight net shots that they almost don't want to give each other the opportunity to play the net. And quite often you'll see a lot of flat little pushes into the midcourt rather than a tight net shot. Judgment from Taufik Hideyax clearly in. Service over 10 8. has gone in the racket that's why he Eleven made the error interval. and that error means that Lindan has a three-point advantage at the mid-game interval mm, yes knew immediately strings are gone I think Anthony it's difficult for people here perhaps in Europe to understand just how big these two players are as far as megastars are concerned in Asia they are absolutely huge and I thought what was very nice was that just last month Lin Dan who was one of the nominees for the Laureus Award staged in London came to London as one of the nominated for best sportsman of the year along with Usain Bolt Sebastian Vettel of course world Formula One champion twice, Novak Djokovic, who of course won the title, and uh, uh, Messi as well. And of course, Messi, a couple of nights ago, Tuesday night, scored five goals in the Champions League for Barcelona. Now, when you put somebody like Lindan in the same breath as athletes like that, perhaps people here in Europe can start to understand just how big a stars and how important these top badminton players are in Asia. That's just fantastic for the world of Batman, isn't it? That such a, a superstar in our game can be up there with those kind of people. You know, people back home would never realise that Lin Dan is so important to the Chinese nation. You know, he's the public face for so many companies and everybody loves him. You know, everybody wants to be him. He's the equivalent of what we would probably say David Beckham over here. And uh, what a credit to the man. He really so is a superstar. Over. Nine, yes, of course, he was the 2010 Male Sports Person of the Year in China. Female Sports Person of the Year was Wang Men, of course, who had won four gold medals in speed skating at the Vancouver Olympics. So again, they're putting him in the status of people winning gold medals and, you know, he is a megastar. He's also very wealthy, I understand. I believe he also drives a Ferrari, Gerald, so he's obviously got a fair bit of cash in the bank and uh, yeah, a few of the Bampton players out there drive Ferraris, so there's obviously some money in the sport. Oh, my goodness. Well, he's pushed it long and wide. How on earth did he get that back? Service over. Lindan's just one of those people that just yes. seems to be able to get the impossible back. It's what makes him the true champion that he is. 
at times he often looks like he's sauntering around the court, a little bit like Lee Chong Wei does as well, but always seems to be there. No matter how much speed or power he uses, it just reads the game so well. That's nicely done. Roll the racket head, creating the disguise. Service. And Doyle, uh, his coach, very pleased with that. Been his coach for a number of years now. Wide. So, so over 13 11. Oh, my goodness, what move is that? It's an outrageous cross court smash. He is so, human so after 12, all. 13. Absolutely, we all make mistakes. Perhaps we'll allow him one a championship. Lovely backhand. to that what we call the round the head so position when the shuttle is played 14, deep 12. into what in essence is the players backhand corner and they still play the shot with the normal overhead action Lindan's movement back into that corner is just so smooth actually had the pleasure of coaching another player against Lindan a few years ago and I always watched him and thought why is he so good? And then I was down courtside, sitting in the coach's chair, watching the game, understanding of where he was hitting. It was almost impossible. You know, it doesn't look deceptive from, you know, on the TV and when you're watching the crowd, but when you're playing against him and you're on court level, you just have no idea where the guy's hitting it. It wide. Oh, no credit to the Indonesian. Service over 13. Sticking 14. with him. Once again, he narrowed the gap to just one solitary point. Again, tactically so clever. 14. Oh. Delightful block across court. And it's interesting, Anthony, because you talked about the disguise that Lindan has overhead, but how many overhead opportunities is he getting? Not many. Very, very clever tactics from Chalfik Hidia. I said this at the start of the match that. That would be the nature in which he would play and uh, this is why he's been such a good player over the years because he does bring something different to the table other than you know the long dimensions of the court in fact Tafik in fact uses less dimensions of the court to play that flat game and play almost like a doubles game 
on his own. And a run of three straight points. Now creeps into the lead. Wipe the court, please. Wipe the court, please. Now the court's going to be mopped of the perspiration. So desperate not to lift the shuttle so, again. So, uh, Tarfik Hidiat trying to play once again back to the net. Well, there's been a lot made of the rivalry over the years between these two men, but the truth of the matter is they actually have a great deal of respect for each other. It's absolutely the case. You can definitely tell that there is the respect there, and that's healthy. Of course, you know, you need big rivalries within the game, but it needs to be decent between the two. Backhand cross court net shot. Tarfik Hidiat. 16 15. Did well on the defence there. And then Byrne restores his lead. his pace going up a gear or so now I think Lindan's got a couple and more levels that he can bring to the table in this game I think he's been very much cruising through the first part of this this game and the last couple of points has just shown what he's capable of So many good quality shots throughout the whole rally. Uh, that deserved to win, end with such a great shot and did. Perfect, please. He had to defend so many. He's taking that backhand late. 
courageous, wasn't it? And that shot off a tight spinning net shot. Seventeen play. Brilliant. Extraordinary courage to play that net shot. Okay. And once again, the back level. <laughs> the net cord. Oh, and then after such a wonderful net shot, so, so, uh, it has to go down as a careless error. Lazy shots. Only took it at about shoulder 19, height. 17. Yeah. Definitely see a game plan from Lindan. Looking to make Taufi work very, very hard all over the court. Like you said in that rally, he did look a bit tired on that last one. And um, Lindan looks so controlled and focused at the moment. from Lindan and you could just tell that both players knew how important that rally was. So it's over 18-19. I think it still shows the confidence of Lindan. He's still I think he's got several more gears that he can offer. I mean go back to the Beijing Olympic final. The speed at which he played was just unbelievable. I mean when he's at his best he's so impressive to watch because of his movement around the corner. I do think he's still, even though it's very, very tight match, I think he's cruising a little bit. best Service over. there's the injection of face that you were talking about 18. suddenly an extra gear the power smash down the line ready to pounce on the reply second one cross court out of the reach of the Indonesian and up come two game points for Lindan Oh, my goodness. 
must have changed his mind. Tafik Hidiyan, what a disappointing way for the opening game to end after a, a wonderful game, game the all the way through until that last 18. return of serve. Yeah, complete miss hit. Well, what a time for that to happen. 21-18, the opening game to Lindan in 28 minutes. Well, I think this is very telling indeed. Lindam was prowling around the court, ready to play on. Telfik Hidiat looking very calm at the side of the court, but taking all of his allotted time. And really, the big question mark in my mind, Anthony, is the desire. Now he's lost the opening game for Telfik Hidiat now to come back. You've kept saying you think that Lindan has an extra gear he can go to. Obviously, Telfik Hidiat probably knows the same thing himself. How does he now approach this game? Does he have the belief he's lost the last eight encounters between these two men? Somehow, he has to find the inner strength from somewhere. Well, this would be a test of the man, whether he's capable of doing it. You know, he's such a great player. We've talked about his experience and everything. He needs to really draw on that now and see what he's possible of. Stating the obvious, the start to this second game is crucial as far as the Indonesian is concerned because if Lin Dan gets too far in front, I really do think the belief will be snapped from the Indonesian. Superb. Finds the line. Kind of what I was talking about with that extra gear, you know, it's really set the stall for the start of this second game. And okay, we've had one mistake from Tafik Hidia, but we've had three incredible rallies from Lindan. And it must be incredibly frustrating when you know you're playing against somebody who can go up more and more levels as and when he needs to. also have to think about what a difference in year makes because 12 months ago Telfik Hidiat was actually the number two seed here at the All England. Lost in the first round to Yamada of Japan. Well, 
this is really ominous for Indonesian Seven fans. Yes. Can't help but think how much that match last night against Chen Jin will have taken out of Taufik Hidiat, you know, psychologically, emotionally, as much as physically. That's the unfortunate thing about men's singles. The draw is so, so strong that even in the first round, you're going to have a very, very tough match. You know, for Taufik Hidiat, it's like to play against Chen Jin. You know, for, you know, he's an incredible player in his own right, and now he's up against the Olympic champion. I think, in all fairness, that can be said for all five disciplines. There are no easy matches nowadays in Super Series events, and especially not in Premier Super Series, and especially when it's the last major event before the end of the Olympic qualifying period. Every single star of World Badminton, all the top players, are here at the All England Championships. This just shows how good Lindan really is. He actually drops his racket here, look, and he's still got the time to recover, play a backhand, get back into the rally nice and easy, and then finishes it with his trademark jump cross-court smash. Serve. Yeah, yeah, I'm down now. Thriving off these flat fast exchanges. And a nine point advantage at the mid game interval. Oh, see how that racket bent as he almost lent on it to. Keep his balance. <laughs> and he doesn't look to be cruising now, does Lindan? Do you know what the tattoo on his left arm is all about there, Anthony? I've no idea. Quite often players will have tattoos of encouragement, certain words that they feel so, so, uh, relevant three, to themselves. Yeah. I know Chris Adcock, for instance, has got no regrets tattooed down his torso. Confidence has just gone through the roof in this game. That is a big problem when you're playing against Lindan. If he gets to that stage where he believes he can play any shot in the book, he really will take you apart. I mean, he's already tried a few really cheeky ones so far in this game. The odd one hasn't quite come off, but when he starts playing like that, he's so dangerous. Wide. 13, 3. Yeah, good call. One's just wide. Ash. 
Trapper was behind him when he played that. All coaches tell you you've got to play those sort of shots, taking the shuttle in front of you. Got the racket head control that he just clips that down. Fourteen three. Service I suspect four, it's really just 14. a case of Taufik Hidiat trying to make this second game scoreline a little more respectable. I'm really not convinced he's got the belief that he can win this. I'm not sure with the way that Lindan's playing at this point, he's got any chance, to be honest. Service over. 15 well, in all four. probability, this is going to be Taufik Hidiat's last All England Championships. Stated his intention to probably retire from top level badminton after the London Olympics. 17. Totally show to showboating now, Lindan. He's literally trying every shot I think he can think of. Defiant to the end, Tarfa Kidiat. Service over, 5-17. Uh, right him off in your peril. Explored. Service over six eighteen. <laughs> oh, Service over. 19-6. Always landed in. Good defensive shots from Talbot Hidayax. So it's over. 7-19. Drifted wide, and with that error, so it's over um, 20 12 match, point match points for Lindan. Four times former champion, Lindan. 
safely through to the semi-final. Taufik Hidiat, who's graced the courts here at the All England Championships for so many years, will end his career without ever having won this prestigious title. But he gave it his all this year. First time in many a year that he wasn't seeded at these All England Championships, but made it through to the quarter-final nonetheless. 21-18, 21-8, the scoreline in the end. 44 minutes of play, and Lindan safely through to the semi-final. And I have to say, in that second game, he really did look very impressive indeed. as both the players leave the courts. Well, Taufik Hiliat has given us so much joy over the years here at the All England, but he goes no further this year. Lindan, as you can see, number two seed into the semi-final, and he will play either Kenichi Targo, the number seven seed from Japan, or Chen Long, his teammate, the number three seed this year.